I'm Reagan O'Hara for Boardman Schools Television Network. Along with my co-host, Mrs. Joyce Mistovich, we are pleased to bring you another edition of Boardman Biography, a BSTN program devoted to profiling outstanding community members and educators who have made significant contributions to the Boardman Schools and the Boardman community. Our guest for this edition of Boardman Biography is Mr. Boardman himself, Attorney Mark Huberman. I'm honored to have known Attorney Huberman since our years attending Boardman High School. Even though we were involved in different realms of the arts at BHS, Attorney Huberman was a star in Boardman Theater, and I loved watching him carry out his role on the stage. Our paths have led us to the passion that we share for the Boardman Schools. I know of no one more dedicated to the Boardman Schools and our community than Attorney Huberman. He is truly Boardman's greatest advocate, a leader in every sense of the word. As an extremely well-respected and longtime member of the Boardman Schools Board of Education, Attorney Huberman shares a genuine concern for all Boardman School educators and our community at large. It gives us great pleasure today to welcome an amazing Boardmanite, Attorney Mark Huberman. Welcome as our guest today and welcome on a show that you created for Boardman Schools Television Network. A real novelty. We are thrilled to have you with us today. And I'm honored and humbled. Great. Let's start out with a little about your background, Attorney Huberman. Mrs. Mistovich shared that you attended Boardman Schools and graduated together in 1969. Where did you and your family live? I've been a Boardmanite my whole life. I was born and raised on Willow Drive, a couple of houses from Brown's Drug Store. Uh, my parents moved there in 1951, the year that I was born, and I went to Market Street Elementary School, uh, then Glenwood Jun Boardman Junior High School, which was Glenwood Middle School, which became Glenwood Middle School. And then uh, Joyce and I were the last class in the old Boardman High School. So I always grew up on Willow Drive, lived there my whole career. I understand your parents were ahead of their time as advocates for healthy eating and living a healthy lifestyle. Can you share more about this? They really were. Uh, my, my father um, had a, was an organic gardener and had a compost pile before people even heard of those sort of things. We used to pump water, if you know where um, Dr. Soller's old resident, old uh, yes. dental practice was yes. on Lucy or whatever that street is. We used to take five gallon jugs and pump water because my father thought that pure water was important just like fresh air was and, uh, and they became vegetarians before anybody even thought vegetarianism was uh, worth it, was even uh, uh, an idea worth even thinking about. And um, they then opened a health food store in 1958 and were way ahead of their time in doing that. And I think, um, time has proved them right and way ahead of their time on so many issues of uh, life and health. Absolutely, absolutely. Your mom continues to be an important part of your life. Can you tell us about her and your parents' influence on your own life? Well, I'm, I'm you know, I, I guess I'm lucky. I'm, I'm in the, I work in the domestic relations court today and I used to work in juvenile court for 10 years so I've seen uh, way too many families that, that you know, uh, kids have broken families and they grow up in single parent homes and I was one of the lucky ones, like Joyce. We, we grew up, and my brother and I grew up uh, with the same parents the whole time that, that loved us, um, that loved us without qualification, and all, their, they lived their life so that we could be the best that we could be, and gave us every opportunity in the world for college and encouraged us to pursue our dreams. And, uh, and my father uh, lived to the ripe old age of 86, and uh, was a very active national figure in the health food industry nationwide. And my mother uh, was uh, co-owned and ran uh, Natural Health Foods and Barbell Center, which is located on Market Street for 33 years. And um, my mother is, uh, is uh, broke her hip at age 90, but is probably stronger today at age 95 than she was then, and still lives with my wife Wanda and I at home on, now on Euclid Boulevard, where I've lived for about the last 30 some years. And she's great, she's amazing. She is amazing. I ran into Attorney Huberman and his mom. She is so sweet, so sweet. Always a smile on her face. Recently a giant eagle. And she just, she's a wonderful lady. Some people get very old and they act. get crotchety. My mother is not one of those. No, she she's very appreciative not. of everything that people do for her. Absolutely. She's a pretty lady. It's a great way to age. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me about your siblings? I have one brother, Jeff, an older brother, who was also a Boardman graduate and was um, a much brighter student at Boardman High School than I was. He was honors club everything. He was advanced English, he was advanced everything. He actually was so bright that he went to the University of Pittsburgh a year early. He, he was an early admission to the University of Pittsburgh. He left in his junior year, never graduated with his class, got his diploma later uh, because he was so bright. And I don't know if you can even do that today, but, uh -huh. but uh -huh. he did. 
And uh, he was French club, science club, chemistry and physics, and mm -hmm. uh, a very, very bright kid. And uh, he went on to get his, um, get his uh, master's degree and then PhD in theater and teaches acting and directing. And he's been at various universities, uh, Wright State, Salem State College, University of Texas. Uh, and for the last probably 20 some years, has been the dean of the College of Communication and Fine Arts at Bradley University. And he's doing quite well. Gifted That's director. Amazing. That's gifted right. director. Did you and your brother help with the family business? Uh, I did. He didn't. My brother always, for whatever reason, uh, I was like followed in the footsteps and I worked at the store. We both worked at the store a little bit, but once we got into high school, my brother seemed to always find jobs outside of, uh, outside of uh, our store. He worked for a sheet and tube, he worked for the county painting guardrails, he, he did all kinds of things except work at the store. Let's talk about your education in Borman schools. What schools did you attend? Market Street, uh, Market Street Elementary from K through six. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I had uh, some great teachers back then. I had a Mrs. Beach, a Mrs. Hall. Actually, one, one cute story about Market Street is that we were the war babies uh, we were the, 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 in the 60s and that, and uh, there were so many kids that wanted to go to the Boardman schools, and we didn't have all the schools in those days. We had Market Street, and, we, and Rotherwood wasn't even built yet, I don't think. Right. There were so many kids that I couldn't go to kindergarten at, at Market Street School, even though I was in that area, because Willow Drive would flow into Market Street. We had so many kids, I went to kindergarten at the Baptist Church. The Baptist Church. A little Jewish kid going to the Baptist <laughs> Church. It was terrifying. <laughs> but uh, I did, and they had a morning and an afternoon section. How about that? Of, of mm -hmm. uh, thing, and I had a Mrs. Woolley, who uh, I'll always, uh, always remember uh, almost terrifyingly, but uh, did well. So, uh, and then I went to uh, we the Junior High School, and uh, I think Mr. Janeski was our Yes, he was principal. principal at, at Junior High yes. School. And then again, we were the last class at the old high school and um, graduated in 1969. Did you have any favorite classes at Borman High School? Um, well, my world was theater. I mean, I had, uh, I, I mean, I had a lot of great teachers and all of that, but my world was, teach, was theater, speech, the speech team and theater. And Mr. Bill Dykins was, I guess if there's one person other than my parents that I credit for making me everything that I am today in terms of confidence and ability to, um, to uh, want to make a difference in the world and, and, to, um, and to speak well for myself. And it's Bill Dykins. He, he, he um, was just one of the great teachers I ever had in my life. He was one of the great directors. There's a book written uh, called, um, called Our Teachers and How We Remember Them. And it's all about people, Dan Rather and all kinds of popular people, remembering their teachers that really made a difference in their life and put them on a path. And, Bill Dykins was that guy for me, and I know for thousands of others. Oh, and he I was just pleased so to celebrate lives. his 90th birthday yes, the other day. But he cast me uh, in an, I was on his speech team, and we were state champions in 1968, which was a very proud moment. There's a plaque in the trophy case that has my name on it. I wasn't one of the great speech team members, but I was You're on that part team. Of the team. I was part of the team, and, uh, and uh, he gave me some starring roles in a couple of plays that, uh, again, gave me confidence and when you got a compliment from Bill Dykins, you earned it. Definitely. Sounds like a great Definitely. guy. He's that is absolutely true. And he just true. celebrated his 90th birthday. Wow. And he's as sharp today as he was when we were in high school. Mrs. Isovich did mention that you were in productions at Borman High School. Can you explain some of the productions that you were in? Well, my, 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 uh, opening, my opening role, they say there's no small parts, only small actors. Mm -hmm. My opening role was uh, in Lil Abner in 1966, I think. It was only the second year we ever did musicals. We did, in 1965, I think Boardman did, Mr. Dykins did Annie Get Your Gun. And that was my brother's era. And then we did Lil Abner, and I played Pappy Yoakum in Lil Abner. And then I played Squire Dapp in Camelot uh, the year after. And then uh, I did, in my senior year, that was where I had the greatest opportunities. And I did uh, Nathan Detroit in Guys and Dolls, the starring role of Nathan Detroit. And I did, um, in a faculty student play, we did uh, the show Harvey, which was tremendous. It was one of the great shows ever done. And I played, maybe it was foreshadowing, but I played Judge Gaffney. And I went on to become a judge magistrate. I think so we again. happen to have a photo pulling from our archives, don't we? 
I think we have a photo if we could pull up. Well, there's a well, picture there's of attorney. Here. There's attorney Huberman as a, his senior picture. Indeed. And um, I think we might have one from Di Guys and Dolls as well. We'll see it may come up it later as we're, we're talking. Yeah, sure. But it was a lot of fun doing a, uh, mm -hmm. a faculty student play. Yeah. I, you don't get that opportunity to actually play opposite your teachers. And uh, that was a lot of fun back then. What was oh, there? There's, there's Guys and Dolls. There it is. And, uh, my Nathan fellow, Detroit. Nathan Detroit and Randy Stefanski was uh, Sky Masters. And the interesting thing in those days is that there weren't today, when you look at the musicals that we do here at the BPAC, mm -hmm. We have guys that have great voices and women that have stupendous voices. Back then, you did. They didn't take voice lessons. They just right. weren't that mature. They didn't. Occasionally, you'd have a few dancers, but we did. Every once in a while, a guy would come along who could be the male lead for everything, and Randy Stefanski was the guy. He had a yeah. wonderful voice, and he played all the leading. Well, he played Sir Lancelot and Lil Abner and Sky Masterson and guys and dolls. I didn't have a great voice. I could carry a tune, but but you were amazing in your productions. Well, I had fun. Amazing. I had fun. And out of all those productions, which was your favorite? No question, it was Guys and Dolls. Guys and, and Dolls. And just a little footnote, thir almost 30 years, almost to the day, I got the opportunity to, I tried out on a lark for a production of Guys and Dolls at the Youngstown Playhouse, thinking I was trying out for a minor role, got cast as Nathan Detroit again, 30 years later, oh, won an yeah. Arthur Award to begin with as best actor at the Playhouse. Congratulations. And, uh, wow. It was a lot of fun. So, but that's the role that's very dear, uh, very dear to my heart. Well, you were tremendous. Now, what about the plays at Ohev Zedek? Remember the plays that they would have there? I was actually the first play I ever did. I was in The King and I. Okay. At the, at the Ohev Zedek Temple, used to do plays as fundraisers, and they were like, they'd get some of the finest actors in the area would come to perform on that stage, and we had great orchestras, great directors, great actors. And I got cast as Little Lewis in The King and I, Anna's son. And yes. um, there was a lady by the name of Anna, Phoebe Woodward Alexander, who's a Broadway actress that actually played the leading role in that show, but it was a lot of fun. That's Aside great. from drama and your role in the school plays, what other activities did you have time for? Uh, I was on the chess team. I founded the chess team here in Boardman. Um, I guess I could say that. I was student council. I think I you were the president of the chess team. I was on a student council, that's right. And um, I was on... Uh, Here you go. There you go. That was, There's uh, the I chess that team. Was our, that might have been our chess team. Yes. yes, indeed. There you are. So we had a chess team, and we, uh, I was on student council. I was treasurer of, actually, treasurer of student council in, uh, I think, my sophomore, sophomore year at Boardman High School. But uh, those were, these were the 60s. They were very provocative times. Mm -hmm. They're a lot of fun. And um, in talking about some of the archives and the images from the past, let's look at a few other pictures. I think we have, um, we did look at your senior picture, but I think we have one. Well, the Here we go, team. the speech team. Well, that was the speech team. We were ca and, captain of the speech team yes. in our senior year. We and those are other captains. Woodworth, Patty Wilson, myself, Linda Olson, and John Wilkie. I John think John Wilkie. Wilkie passed away. Yes, he did. A couple of years ago. Yes, he did. Yeah. They were, uh, and I think Brad went on to be a lawyer. Patty's still in town. I don't know where Linda Olson is today. She's in town. Is she? Yes, she's in town and lives on um, Brookfield. I had her daughters in school, married Bob Gustafson. So. We were a very good speech team. Yes, excellent speech team. That's such a great photo. Where did your passion, would you say, come from speech and drama? I mean, you were so actively involved I in that. I think it came from my father. My father uh -huh. was a. Uh, my father was a. If you ever met my father, he was a. He was a showman. He was a very outgoing yes. guy. He could tell stories like nobody's Max. business. Yeah, he's a, he's a toastmaster kind of yes. guy. And when he was in the army uh, in World War II, he volunteered after Pearl Harbor. He wrote shows for the USO, and he was a poet. And he, when I grew up, um, my father was originally born in Paris, grew up in New York, um, and then married my mom after the war, came to Youngstown, but. New York was his roots, and so Broadway theater was his love, and so there probably wasn't a Broadway show in the 1960s that I didn't see, and that we would go to New York. They were a lot cheaper in those days, cheaper to stay in New yes. York, cheaper to see a show, but yes. the first one he ever talk, took me to see was uh, Sammy Davis Jr. starring in Golden Boy on Broadway. And, oh. and, so, and I, so I, I have a love affair with theater and musical comedy, and when I went off to college, I followed my brother's footsteps. I also majored in theater and speech. And, so, and you continue uh, to go to New York. 
and see. I still do. Yeah, my daughter later. Lisa's, my, my oldest daughter is a, has a P, a, an MFA in playwriting. And she lives in Queens, so in fact she just called me last night and said, when are you coming because you want to go see Rocky the Musical has just become, just opened yes. on Broadway, so she wants me to come and see. That is, I love New York. Not to great. live there, mm -hmm. but I love but to visit visit. New York. Yes. It's a very, yes. very alive town. So can you tell us a little bit about your collegiate years? I went and to, went, uh, I followed my brother's footsteps to the University of Pittsburgh, and uh, this was, uh, again, 1969, was a, the Vietnam War was at its height, and America was kind of tearing itself apart. In fact, one of the interesting theater roles I got was in my fall uh, term at Pitt, I got cast in an anti-war play by uh, the author Joseph Heller, who wrote Catch-22, who wrote another play that most people don't know called We Bombed in New Haven. And the story was about a recruiter named Starkey who sends his son, who has to, he's the selective service guy, he has to send his son to Vietnam. And I played Starkey's son and I come back in a box. And he has to live with the fact that he conscripted his own kid. Uh -huh. And, um, but it was a, you know, those were lively times. And I, I went to the anti-war demonstrations in the Vietnam War mm -hmm. and uh, things were pretty lively. And about halfway, I was a theater major. But about halfway through my undergraduate school, I thought, well, you know, how good of an actor am I really? Because musical comedy is what I did. And I decided to do something that maybe would be a career. So I took up, I always liked history and speech. So I went and took some political science courses, fell in love with the law, and went off to law school. After that, Ohio Northern, I graduated in 1976. That's great. Mm -hmm. Absolutely great. Can you tell us about your wife? My wife, Wanda, is uh, the one that really should have been the lawyer in the family. Uh, she's, we've been married uh, since 1991, and, um, and uh, Wanda is a, uh, a litigation specialist with, a, uh, with Westfield Insurance, a major insurance company, mm -hmm. and is not a lawyer, because in her family, when they grew up, that's not what women didn't go to college. And, but uh, she uh, worked for a lawyer almost right out of high school, in fact, even in high school, I think, and uh, did a lot of paralegal work for a long time, started working for an insurance company and she's so bright and so smart um, that she's just worked her way up and now she manages attorneys and hires attorneys in very complex litigation. She's a very, very bright lady. And a Would, wonderful lady. And a wonderful lady. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Would you share a little bit about your children and what they're currently doing? Well, uh, my youngest daughter, Lisa, is, a, uh, is my starving artist in New York. Uh, she's teaching a few classes at Rutgers, but she has her MFA in playwriting and is writing plays and hoping one of them will be the next Harry Potter or something like that. Uh, but she's also working uh, for Trader Joe's in the city, actually teaching at a high school for the performing arts, teaching some playwriting to, in, in, in schools too, so she's doing a little of everything. Uh, she's 28 years old. Um, my daughter Heather is my oldest daughter and she is a Boardman graduate. By the way, I just want to say both of them did really yes. well by the Boardman yes, schools. Sure Heather did. was in the orchestra under the great legendary Carol Clark. And um, my daughter Lisa was an art. She yes. was one of Joyce yes. Mistovich's yes. protégés, and, and Lisa was great Fabulous in the arts student. and on the journal. She was a editor of the Bugle um, in her senior year, and uh, a gifted, gifted writer. And um, my oldest daughter Heather now is a um, is a clerk in Boardman Court uh, and doing quite well. And um, the star of the family right now is uh, my my wife and I had the privilege of raising my uh, niece, uh, Liz Fowler, from when she was about 11 years old, some, some family, family challenges that uh, they had, and um, we got her into the Boardman schools, and she became a star in the Boardman schools, became a captain of the swim team, exposed me to the whole world of swimming, which I never knew, but she did very well, and she's now uh, graduating in May from the University of Akron with a 3.8, and uh, in green social work, I'm studying for her boards right now, and I have no doubt she will be a star in the world. She's one of these go-getters, as so much as anybody I've ever seen. Studying for the boards for to get her uh, license for social work. Social work, mm -hmm. right? And then oh, she's applied true. for a uh, a uh, an accelerated master's program, an eleven-month program in conjunction with Cleveland State University of Akron, oh. and we'll see if she gets into it. But she's done. Good luck to her. She's a great kid and has done great work. Good she's luck she's to my her. star. That's great. Mrs. That's Mistovich great. tells me you're a key figure in Borman School's television network. Can you tell us about this? Well, I, I kind of got roped into it by uh, Joyce and uh, Alan Butcher, who's kind of the co-founder of uh, Borman Schools. I mean, I always, uh, 
I've always been a, a champion of everything that's great about the arts and boardmen. Uh, my proudest achievement, I guess, if I have one on the school board, was building this Boardman Performing Arts Center and being a leading voice. I was kind of the voice of the campaign. Yes, I wasn't the are. chairman of the campaign, but because I always believed that the arts were what made Boardman special, and it still does to this day. And um, absolutely. And so I, um, uh, when we were building this facility. Um, BC TV was only at Center Middle School. Yes. Under under Joyce's and Al Butcher's tutelage, and we knew that it really needed to be able to carry forward here at the high school. And so when we built when we designed this place, we built a studio here, and um, hoping that we'd get the money to furnish it. And through the generosity of Greg Smith, uh, we got you know a chunk of money to furnish the studio, and um, and I always thought here's another wonderful opportunity for kids and boardmen. As TV and media was just kind of coming of age, we were, we were ahead of the time mm -hmm. in doing that. And uh, so it was just kind of a natural fit for me to be involved with this just as I was in theater. And, um, so in my role on the school board, I was able to kind of champion and make sure that it kept getting funded and, and I, I still sort of lobby for it. That's right. And we're very thankful for yes. that. You currently serve as Chief Magistrate of Mahoney County Domestic Relations Court and your professional associations are most impressive. Can you share more with our viewers about your role well, in the court? Well, I, I have, it's kind of an interesting uh, bit of history. I, from, I was in the private practice of law with Attorney James Gentile from, from 1976, 1977, and then in 1989 I got the opportunity to become a part-time referee magistrate of the juvenile court, and that's kind of where my love of working with kids and helping kids and all that kind of came from. And uh, in 1998, so from 89 to, to 99, I worked in the juvenile court and uh, really enjoyed doing that, but it was part-time. In 1998, Judge Beth Smith, a year before, had been elected um, the first female common pleas judge in the history of Mahoney County. She was the first county court judge, then came the domestic relations court, and I got a call one day, would I be interested in becoming her full-time chief magistrate? And um, Judge Smith and I had known each other. We knew each other in the private practice of law for a while, and I thought, wow, this is pretty good. And uh, it's been a great ride, and I've been with Judge Smith for the last um, about 17 years, and, uh, and I really love the people I work with, and uh, I, think we have a great, I think we have a great court, and I think we have a reputation as being a great court of being fair to people, and not just being fair to people, but being kind to people. Even when we rule against someone, if we, deny someone custody that's seeking it, I think they feel like we treated them fairly, or we, mm -hmm. at least we tried to treat them fairly, and especially looked out that's for their children. That's something you could be proud of, that you feel that that I think so. I, the way Judge Smith and I, I really admire the way Judge Smith leads that court, and I think she's happy with me, too. Great. So that's good. I'm sure. Did you ever think back in high school that you would one day hold such an esteemed position in our community? Actually, I don't know if you remember, but I remember we were, were in a government class together back in high school. And I remember that you would debate the teacher in high school. And I thought to myself, someday, who knows, he might be president. He just comes up with these, these issues and questions that seem to fall back upon the teacher that they need to look for more information to answer your questions. Well, it was the 60s, so yes. we didn't mind yes. challenging whether it was doing opening or school day with school prayers or Bible readings or things like that that just didn't seem to make sense. Uh, right. We did, but uh, I think, you know, coming from my mom and dad, I always, whenever I disagreed with anybody, I thought I always did it respectfully. It's kind yes. of way, and I think I've always, on my term on the school board, that's kind of the way I always try to do that too. You can differ with people, but you can differ agreeably, and uh, I think that's an important way to live life. When you said that I ever think that I would be where I am, yes. I got to tell you, the most surreal moment that I ever had was in my second year on the school board in 1984 or 85. We had a superintendent, Ron Overfield, who left. And he wasn't a real yes. popular guy. Yes. And we were interviewing candidates to be the next superintendent. And I'm mm -hmm. on the school board. I'm interviewing Dick Selby, who was my high school principal. And I'm thinking, what a turnaround this is. Mm -hmm. Isn't that, that the was, truth? But it was very satisfying. And to become a peer with people that yes. were your teachers mm -hmm. yes. was really special, and special to this day. Exactly. I agree. You served on the school board for 20 years. 
Longest serving. Yes, Daytona. the longest serving member yeah. of the Boardman Board of Education. What impact do you think your leadership had? Uh, you know, I think. I mean, uh, I hear I, nothing but good things to this day from educators as far as, and community members, about how caring and how dedicated you were to what you did on the Boardman, and for Boardman schools and on the Board of Education. What, in your eyes, well, I think that you say? Uh, probably maybe the first thing I did and, and maybe the most lasting thing I did is that it's tough. Uh, our economy in America over the last 30 years or so has been really tough. And to get people to vote more taxes for schools. It's the only control that people have over their taxes is for their township and their schools and occasionally a, a levy for children's services or something like that. You don't have any control of what Congress does. They just, they want to increase your taxes, right. they just do so. So, you know, when times, are, when times are tough and people are on fixed incomes, it's really hard for them to vote more taxes. It's tough, and especially when they don't have kids in the school anymore. And I, I guess I always thought it was my challenge and my goal as a school board member to remind people that, that they only went through the, school, the Boardman schools because of people before them right. that raised the money, that passed the bond issues to build the schools that did that. And if you don't, and, and that always, that remembering where you came from and right. remembering who came before you is a really important thing. And so in my times on the school board, not only did I always try to remind people of that, but I also had to try to be like an ambassador of the Boardman Schools and showing all the great things that we have here at Boardman. And, uh, and I'm pretty passionate about it and was pretty passionate about it in all my years on the school board. And um, I think whether it was athletics or the arts or academics, we had a lot to crow about, like they say about the Canfield Fair. And I, was a, I crowed about it a lot, and I still do, yes. because I think Nobody does in this area and maybe even in this state all the things that we do that, that do it as well as we do in the right. arts, the academics, the athletics. Lots of them have good academics. Yes. Lots of them have good athletics. We have those. We have the arts and nobody does all three and That's nobody right. does the arts as well as we do. I've always been pretty proud That's of that and I've always exactly right. tried to be an ambassador for reminding people that's why you need to continue to support the board of the schools because uh, we're worth, they, they deserve support, the teachers, the students. Um, and during Very my well tenure, said. We, 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 we were successful. When I got on the school board in 1983, we had had a strike in 1980. The community was very divided and we had failed six school levies in a row. And I got elected with Elaine Mancini on the theme of positive leadership. And I'm pleased to say that in 1984, in our first time on the board, we got the first new school levy passed in November of 1984. And we went a 20-year period during my tenure. We never failed another school levy. Even big levies, that's, six mills, 5.9. That speaks volumes It was about a, your pretty role. proud. But we were a united board. I don't want to take all the credit for it. We, had, mm -hmm. we right. were a very united right. board. We had great, great superintendents, great staff. This school district was worth supporting, yes. and it still is. Exactly. You continue to be such an ambassador for Boardman and our schools. And I know you've received a lot of awards in your years, but one award that comes to mind is your recent 2012 recipient as a distinguished alumni. Um, I truly believe this could not be awarded to a more deserving person. How did you feel when you found out that you were actually being honored in that capacity. I was stunned. I, I guess I can say that when I, when I retired from the school board in, 19, in 2004, that people were going to take me out to dinner. And I just never, I, I've never, to tell you the truth, I've never received a lot of accolades. I've never done things that I do, I don't think, because no. the people saying, oh, Mark, That's you did a right. great job. That's right. I, I just, but it's nice to hear it. Yes. And when I, when I went to this dinner at, uh, at Fond du Lac or someplace, and all these people started walking. I figured it was just going to be the school board and their family taking me to dinner. And all these people, everybody that I ever served with, every school board member, every administrator, their spouses, and all that came in. And, and they said nice things. And I thought, wow, you know, you don't do things for all the nice people say, but boy, it's nice to hear it. Yes. So when I got that award, I, I thought, that's nice. It was very satisfying. Very certainly, de certainly deserving. Extremely nice. deserving for all that you've done. And exactly, you, you are a very humble person. 
and you do what you do because of the love of the community you live in and the love of the schools you've attended and your children have attended. And I think that that just is so, um, so wonderful. And I'm so happy that you did receive that award. Thank you. And we continue to thank you for your support of Borman Schools and our programs such as BSTN, especially us here at BSTN. We're very grateful for all the support that you've given us over the I'm years. I'm very proud of BSTN. I've thank always you. been proud of theater, but BSTN is kind of the emerging uh, incredible arts program. And under Mr. Hollibaugh, he's just taken us to levels that I would never have dreamed of, that I always hoped to see. But now we got somebody who's doing that and have stars mm -hmm. like you. Um, Thank yes. you. Get an opportunity yes. to shine. That's great. <laughs> exactly. That's just great. Exactly. We're very fortunate. You know, as we spotlight, spotlight outstanding Boardmanites on this program, we're reminded of your extensive community uh, involvement and community service. I sir see that you've served on, you serve, continue to serve now on everything from the Ohio Supreme Court Commission on the Rules of Practice and Procedure to the president of the National Health Association to Family Law Committee for the Ohio Bar Association to your commitment to your place of worship. So can you tell us a little bit more about your role and how you see your role in the community and how do you manage to fit all of this into your very busy schedule? Well, as I think I said to you when I interviewed you, there's an old saying that I've always been very proud of, uh, very fond of, that says, you want something done, you go to a busy person. Yes. Busy people find the way uh, if they're motivated and inclined to do so. I think for me personally, my father uh, was always a fan and always quoted a great line of, of a great educator, Horace Mann, who was really considered to be the father of public education in America, in Boston. There's a statue to him in, in yes. this downtown Boston. Yes. And Horace Mann said, be ashamed to die until you've won some victory for mankind. That was my father's clarion call about always trying to make the world a better place for having been there. And I've always found... Um, uh, I've always been kind of driven by that motto, and I've always found great satisfaction in doing so. In all the different community organizations that I've been in, I think the thing that's been, um, that's been most rewarding is not just the things I get to do, but the people I get to meet along the way. In, in, in the Boardman schools, the, the superintendents that I've gotten to know on a personal basis, the teachers that I've gotten to know, uh, the Joyce Mistoviches of the world, I mean, that you work on levy campaigns with, that's really something. That's really great. And, uh, and in terms of being kind of a public citizen, I had an uncle uh, by the name of Abe Harshman, late Abe Harshman. He died way too young some years ago, but he was on the, he was uh, an accountant, but became a public citizen. Got on the school board in the city of Youngstown. He was the finance director of the city of Youngstown. His wife Florence, who's still alive and one of the great ladies in the world, taught here at Boardman Schools with Mr. Dykins uh, way back when. And he was a public citizen and always thought it was a calling, maybe it was a Jewish thing, maybe it was just a, a, um, a being ashamed to die until you won victories for mankind, but I've always wanted, to, I've always enjoyed and found very rewarding being involved, whether it's the Youngstown Playhouse or Community Action Council or trying to make a difference in the law. That's just personally rewarding. It's one thing to hear a case, a domestic relations case every day and, and you know, help a kid in a difficult situation, but outside of that, to be able to fill your life with rewarding things of helping schools and helping kids succeed and, and helping you know, poverty programs, and that, that's, that's what makes life worth living. Well, you know, as I look back on your past community service and the broad spectrum <clears throat> of what you're involved in, it really touched my heart. I mean, from here, chairman of the Good Food Co-op. Of course, I knew your role as president in the Youngstown Playhouse. Um, we talk about the Bar Association and your affiliation there. But even YSU Reading Festival Advisory Board and Adolescent Suicide Prevention Project um, to the Board of Directors of Help Hotline. I was on a board that issued a grant to Help Hotline to help them go further in what they continue to do. To a participant in the rating, reading, radio reading service, rather, with the Youngstown Area Society for the Blind. That, you know, with our daughter being visually impaired and all, to me, I just think you are so generous in giving back your time to the community and really not just Boardman community, but the community at large and all that you care about. And I think, as you said to me when I was interviewed recently, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. 
As far as on the Huberman tree, the apple certainly does not fall far from the tree. And I, I know that your dad is smiling down on you, and I know that your mom, I just see the look in her eye and the twinkle in her eye when she walks with you hand in hand. Nobody like her marking. That's right, that's, that's sure. right. So that's that is very touching. I'd like to thank you for joining us today on Boardman Biography, Attorney Huberman. We'd also like to thank you for your years of dedication and service to our Borman schools and Borman community. You have certainly helped Borman be a nice place to call home as you continue to touch the lives of our community members. I also want to thank you for being an amazing Boardmanite, for your leadership in this community from a dedicated school board member to a caring public citizen, to your impressive role as Chief Magistrate. Thank you for your dream and passion to keep the cameras rolling at Boardman Schools Television Network. And thank you for your genu genuine love for the community we grew up in and continue to call home. You've made such great impact in the lives that you have touched and we're honored to have you as our guest today on the program that you created to profile outstanding Boardman community members. We're proud to finally share your story with our viewers of BSTN. Thanks Attorney Huberman for sharing your story with us today and for your partnership in Boardman Schools Television Network. I look forward to our continued role in this great endeavor. Thank you. If you want to know why I do it, it's great teachers like you and upcoming stars like you. Well, thank you. We are so grateful. We hope you have once again enjoyed this edition of Boardman Biography. If you have a great Boardmanite in mind that you would like to see profiled, please email us your suggestions at boardmantv.org and we'll try to line them up in the meantime, thank you for tuning in and thank you for your support of the Boardman Schools Television Network. I'm Reagan O'Hara for BSTN. Let's keep striving for excellence.